education is very central to truly transforming our society and equalizing society. And we can't mess around about that. And it's not only about access, it's also about quality and about relevant education. There are 50 million of us and half of us are poor, very poor. And of the remaining 25 million, we're sitting anything between just above the bread line to very rich. So we need education sorely. And, and the Constitution documents this entitlement in Section 29 of the Constitution. It does something quite near magical, actually. It says basic education, entitlement to it is absolute, and that's without qualification. And it says further education will be subject to progressive realization and availability of resources. That really means, at least in constitutional terms, that the state has a duty progressively to make further education accessible. Yes, subject to availability of resources, but we've said over and over again in various cases, like Ruedboom, like TAC, access to antiretrovirals, those words mean that the state will have a plan which will allow a progressive realization or, or access to healthcare, progressive access. And their conduct may not decrease access. So the question must, because it must progressively make education accessible. If you hike fees every single year, is there progressive realization of access? Or is it decrease of access to poor people in particular? And we were aware of various models when we wrote the Constitution at the time. But we placed that obligation on the state. So I think the claim of those young people is, is valid. Mm. Seen within the historical context and within the present time. And it's not unknown around the world. I taught at the Zurich Law School not so last year. Access is universal. Almost all the social democratic states in Scandinavia, access is universal. So it is possible to conceive a plan that will progressively move towards universal access. And resources will have to be arranged and rearranged in a way that permits that, which implies reprioritizing a number of things. It may be that we can't afford many bodyguards. Mm. It may be that we can't afford our political elite any housing. It may be that parliamentarians must buy their own food. <laughs> and not their free. It may be so, so you, you prioritize, reprioritize, depending on national objectives and national interests. So, uh, and that is where the phrase subject to available resources is a complicated debate. It doesn't suggest you take from others in order to give, but it says you prioritize in a way, and other countries have done that in Scandinavia. So for my part, when we were crafting an agreement with the students, the university, the whole community, had this debate that I'm making now, this argument. And we agreed as a university that we will firmly pronounce to the world that the claim is valid. Mm. Two, we would ask the police to leave so that we demilitarize the campus. That's a free zone. Ideas must float. Um, contestation of ideas is what universities are really about. But the gift from the students, one, they will return to class. Two, there'll be no violence. 
and we wrote a common pledge that the students in the university would then, or they wrote, because I'm non-executive, a pledge in which they would, would pronounce this as a solution to WITS and hopefully a solution that might cover, enthuse other campuses. And at about 3, 4 a.m., of course, the phone started ringing and the students shifted the goalposts significantly. And there a fresh set of demands that were sent to me. I had the pledge, mm. which I was going to read the following day and conduct mm. the assembly, um, and which would tell the whole nation that we think we have found it. The claim is correct. We must approach government and urge for a plan that will progressively realize access to higher education. Um, and there the qualifications would come in. And all themselves ought to be reasonable. And the plan was shattered for that reason. Um, and, and we could not go on with the General Assembly because it's reserved for unanimity. Mm within the university uh, community. And there was none by about 3, 4 a.m. Of, of that day. So coming back to it, yes, I think we should continue to keep the university open. We should try and have a full academic year. And we should continue to protect the assets that we have and young people who would like to write and finish their exams. We are 36,000 students strong. Um, and we have to find that balance between 36,000 vis-a-vis 2,000 who are unhappy. And, and I think that's what Adam Habib is trying to do.